Whenever a comment or a tweet or anything else includes the phrase, you should know this being a barrister, it always seems to me that they're trying to score points. And it's usually wrong, with all respect. Just like this one here from Carl Thornley. Now, I thought this whole issue deserved a bit of explanation because it seems to be that something that a lot of people misunderstand. Carl Thornley says, no expectation of privacy in public. You should know this being a barrister. Now, Carl is right only to the extent that there is no automatic right to privacy in a public place. But that's not the end of the matter. It rarely is. But when it comes with the phrase, you should know this being a barrister, especially when it's in response to a tweet that I put where I quoted the factors that the court will consider as decided in an authority by the High Court, affirmed by the Court of Appeal when dismissing the newspaper's appeal against the judgment, that there is a reasonable expectation of privacy in given situations, I thought this was worth explaining. So the circumstances of this are as follows. This originated from a tweet from this account here that said, there needs to be a law preventing people from filming emergency services dealing with incidents. Fed up of people filming when we're dealing with vulnerable people and tragic scenes, all for likes and shares on social media. I should have the right not to be filmed. Now, I think most people in an objective, reasonable society would agree with that. If somebody is lying in the road being treated by emergency services workers, they shouldn't be filmed doing so. They should have a reasonable expectation of privacy, which is what I said. I res responded to say there is a reasonable expectation of privacy. So, yes, they shouldn't be filming. Now, the response from I was blocking quite boldly said doesn't apply here, actually. Um, with no basis or reference or law or any supporting references whatsoever. So I felt like it was necessary to correct that position and respond with an authority, which is fairly well known if you're a barrister, especially if you look into these areas of law. I said, I disagree. It depends on the facts and the relevant factors. In determining whether or not a claimant, for example, for a breach, um, misuse of private information or all those kind of things, had a reasonable expectation of privacy, the courts will have regard to the following factors. Now, let's think about these for the purposes of this video and this response to this tweet, depending on how I put this video out. Consider these factors in, in proportion with the complaint by emergency services workers dealing with vulnerable people at the side of the road being filmed for social media purposes. The attributes of the claimant. So in this scenario, the claimant, would-be claimant, prospective claimant for uh, misuse of private information is the one being filmed whilst lying on the floor in an undignified position, just splattered over social media. That's the would-be claimant. So the attributes of the claimant, they might be someone in that position who's experienced some kind of collision, attack, or whatever it might be, and is being photographed. That's the claimant we're talking about. That's the first factor the court will consider. And these are all derived, by the way, not by my imagination, by the High Court affirmed by the Court of Appeal when dismissing the newspaper's appeal against the judgment. That's the first thing they consider. Next, the nature of the activity in which the claimant was engaged. Well, that could either be the emergency services worker or the person lying on the floor. The activity being they're lying on the floor, either treating or being treated at that scene in probably an undignified position. I think one of the comments talked about the removal of clothing. Use your imagination, and uh, that's the activity that they were involved in because they were treating somebody at the roadside or whatever it might be. Next, the place at which it was happening. Well, you know, this is not in their own home. It's out in public. Granted, it's in a public place. But did they, did they were they just walking around or were they lying on the floor? So all of those will be taken into consideration. The nature and purpose of the intrusion. Well, if someone's lying on the floor being treated and is photographed for the purposes of social media, then the purposes of the intrusion? Well, to take a photograph of someone lying on the floor in an undignified position for the purposes of splattering it on social media is one thing the court's going to take into account. Next, the absence of consent and whether it was known or could be inferred. Now, would you reasonably infer that somebody lying on the floor in an undignified position is going to give their consent for you to take their photographs and put it on social media? No. In an objective, reasonable society, most people are not going to do that. Some people might, but I would suspect 
90 plus percent of people would say, no, I would rather you don't take those photographs and put them on social media. So it's probably not known, probably not inferred, and probably wouldn't be given in any event. The effect on the claimant. Well, you know, any reasonable person would probably, again, not want their photographs in that situation published on social media. The circumstances in which and for the purposes for which the information came into the hands of the publisher. Well, the circumstances, if someone is being treated at the roadside or wherever in an emergency situation, um, that's going to be considered. And the purposes for which the information, the information being the photograph or video, came into the hands, well, if they rushed up opportunistically to take those photographs to spread on social media, then that's going to be taken into consideration. Taken together... My view is, in this situation, there is, as I fairly bluntly put earlier on, there is a reasonable expectation of privacy. That is my assessment as a barrister. I believe that would be the assessment of the court, and I'm going to back it up. I'm not. This is not just my imagination here. So, as you can see from the comments here, um, some people do say, you know, there is no expectation of privacy in public, no law stopping a member of the public filming. Well, there is, actually. I quoted it. So... When disagreeing, I would respectfully suggest that you go and read the judgment. It is available online. I have access with my law libraries, which I'm going to show you. Now, first of all, from the top down, uh, this was the Court of Appeal affirming the decision um, and dismissing the appeal. Appeal dismissed. That was the newspaper appealing against the decision, against the judgment. The judgment was on the case summary as follows. These were children of a well-known British musician... And the court held that the children had a reasonable expectation of privacy in relation to paparazzi photographs taken of them at a cafe out in public. Now, the relative portion of the judgment, there's there's lots of it, that, but this one bit that I'm going to read to you is the conclusion on the expectation of privacy. So just to dispel any myths and any misunderstandings that there is, depending on all those factors I've just talked about, an expectation of privacy in a public place. It is not a free-for-all. It is not that you can take your GoPro into public and film whoever and whatever you want. Um, I'm looking at DJI, by the way, now, because um, GoPro at latest uh, interaction wasn't all that pleasant. But by the by, um, it is not a free-for-all. This paragraph of the judgment explains this quite clearly. In my judgment... The photographs were published in circumstances where the children had a reasonable expectation of privacy. This was because the photographs showed their faces. One of the chief attributes of their per, uh, respective personalities, as they were on a family trip with their father going shopping to a cafe, and they were identified by surname. Now, regardless of being identified by surname or not, if, as I said, going back to the situation here where there was a complaint by this account up here that there needs to be a law preventing people from filming emergency services dealing with incidents who is fed up of people filming vulnerable people in tragic scenes. If you apply this judgment to with the factors that I quoted which are the factors that the court will take into consideration. In my view, there will be an expectation of privacy depending on the situation. If you take the photograph from afar and you can't really see anything, that's probably fine. Of the vehicles and of the emergency services workers working on said vulnerable person from a distance, probably fine. If you go up and take intimate photographs, which I suspect is what was being complained of in the original tweet, which is why it was being complained of in the first place, there is, in my view, an expectation of privacy that the court is likely to find. And if you publish those photographs online, in my view, it is likely that the court will find that there is a misuse of personal information. The personal information being the photographs of identifiable individuals in scenarios where they ought not to be filmed and published online, depending on how they were filmed, use your imagination. I don't need to be too graphic for this video for you to work that out. I hope that you agree with me. As a civil society, we should really agree that on the one hand, we are balancing, you're in public, so there is no automatic right to privacy. 
Yes, I've said that in many times in many videos before. There is not an automatic right to privacy in a public place. You should be able to take your phone out and film and, and do whatever you want outside within reason. It is not a free-for-all. And there should be certain situations like the one that I've described where somebody should be afforded the reasonable expectation of privacy. I hope you agree. You might not. I respect your view if you don't agree. And you can leave me your thoughts and comments in the box below if, if you're on YouTube or the thread below if you're on Twitter or wherever this video goes out. I haven't decided yet. But I hope you agree. If you don't, I respect your view. You're probably wrong if you don't agree. Uh, but that's what you pay lawyers for. If you were paying me for legal advice on this issue and there were a very intimate photograph taken of somebody vulnerable at the roadside and it were published and caused them distress, uh, alarm and distress, uh, and po possibly worse, then um, my advice would be that they had a reasonable expectation of privacy and that that was a misuse of personal information and possibly other things as well. That is my view. I will stand by it. And I think as a civil society, that's the standard that we should hold ourselves to. It should not be, hey, look, somebody's at the side of the road having their clothes taken off to be treated. Let's take a photograph to get lots of likes and shares on social media. That, I think, is wrong. I think the court would find it wrong, and I think society should find it wrong. If the courts and society did not find that wrong, then I think that is quite poor. So I don't think that would be the case. Let me know what you think in the comments, and thank you for watching.